the European airline industry is considered to be fragmented. However, there is a group called the Big Five formed by Lufthansa Group, Ryanair, IAG, EasyJet, and Air France KLM that have increased their market share of intra-European seat capacity to 54%. In any case, every airline that runs operations in Europe can be classified in one of the business models mentioned above. So, let's go and have a look at each in detail. Full Service Carriers Full Service Carriers, or FSCs, have been long considered those large national carriers operating a hub-and-spoke network system with high-frequency routes, flying both short and long-haul routes with diverse fleets. A hub-and-spoke network system is defined as a system of routing air traffic in which a major airport serves as a central point for coordinating flights to and from other airports. Therefore, FSCs strive for developing an extensive network to gain a competitive advantage. This is usually achieved via code sharing with many partners in global alliances. At this point, it is important to know that code sharing is a marketing arrangement in which an airline places the code that identifies its flight, designator code, on a flight operated by another airline, and sells tickets for that flight. Pricing strategies are usually complex within the FSC group, with most airlines using bundled fares and offering legacy frequent flyer programs. Examples of full-service carriers include Lufthansa, Air France, British Airways, Alitalia, Iberia, TAP Air Portugal, Air Europa, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Swiss International Airlines. Low-Cost Carriers Low-Cost Carriers, or LCCs, are usually those new airlines entering the market and trying to compete with legacy FSCs. Traditionally, low-cost carriers operate point-to-point -point network models and they use the uniformity of their fleets as a critical cost-saving tool to increase their competitiveness. According to a paper presented by students of the Faculty of Aeronautics at the Technical University of Kosice in Kosice, Slovakia, the point-to-point -point network model operates flights directly between two cities regardless of the distance. Airlines using this model do not have to transfer baggage automatically, thus saving costs from those operations. According to the paper, they can save up to 30% from avoiding stopovers as they only offer direct flights. Other benefits airlines take from the point-to-point -point network model include stable flight planning, total travel time reduction, reduced airport dependency, lost baggage risk reduction, maximum utilization of aircraft, reduced amount of fuel usage and pollution per passenger, single fleet type, reduction of the cost associated with maintenance and staff retraining, Key drivers of the economics of low-cost carriers are younger fleets, denser seating capacity, higher aircraft utilization, and greater labor productivity, while their pricing strategies are simpler using unbundled fares with ancillary services available for additional fees. Given the fact that LCCs do not rely on an extensive network, they rarely collaborate with other airlines through alliances or code sharing, thus selling most of their tickets and ancillary services directly on their websites. However, a trending business strategy of low-cost carriers are implementing involves partnering with non-flight service providers to offer a more comprehensive experience to their passengers, including accommodation, taxi services, car rental, tourist attractions, special events, among others. Examples of LCCs include Ryanair, EasyJet, Norwegian, Flybe, Sky Europe, Wizz Air, Transavia Airlines, Belotia, Blue Panorama Airlines, TUI, NEOS, Hybrid Model Recent studies have come to the conclusion that most of the European airlines cannot be classified as fully FSCs or LCCs anymore. A key aspect of the airline industry is its dynamic nature that pushes business models to evolve over time in order to adapt to changing markets. Although the dynamic nature was already generating change within the industry, the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the evolution and we now see airlines embracing both FSC and LCC characteristics, thus creating the new hybrid model business. According to the studies, there are two types of hybrid models. One focuses on the FSC style, but adds certain features of the LCCs, such as operating uniform fleets with a high percentage of leased aircrafts. Here, we can find airlines that include flag carriers, which many people may think should fall in the FSC group. Some examples are Condor, Aer Lingus, Iceland Air, Air Serbia, Air Malta, Edelweiss Air. On the other hand, airlines in the second type of hybrid model lean toward the LCC model, but keep important features of the FSCs, 
such as operating a hub-and-spoke network structure, but with a younger aircraft, and try to appeal to business travelers by implementing corporate discounts and high flight frequency on their routes, although at the expense of a higher onboard density which only includes economy seating. Similar to the Model 1, here we find airlines that people could think are pure FSCs or LCCs, some of them even mentioned before. Examples include Norwegian, Eurowings, Vueling Airlines, Jetsu.com, Flyby, Aegean Airlines, Croatia Airlines, Iberia Express. It is interesting to see many flag carriers in the list of hybrid models, and even a large airline entering the hybrid model with a branding of its own in the case of Iberia Express. This clearly shows how adaptable airlines must be when running their businesses to stay in the competition for market share. Charter Airlines Charter airlines are airlines that provide scheduled flights that are not available to the general public and are typically operated on a charter basis for specific customers. There are two main types of charter airlines. Those that operate their own aircraft, those that wet lease aircraft from other airlines. According to the FAA, a wet lease in aviation is any leasing arrangement whereby a person agrees to provide an entire aircraft and at least one crew member. Some charter airlines also offer charter services to other airlines. The charter business model has a number of advantages for airlines. Let's take a look at some of them. The first benefit for the charter airline is that the model allows the organization to offer scheduled flights without having to bear the entire cost of operating and maintaining their own aircraft. Of course, this applies for those operating under a wet lease, since the leased aircraft will be covered by the leasing company with maintenance service and insurance. The airlines that wet lease aircraft only have to worry about fuel and airport fees. The second benefit of the model is that it gives charter airlines the flexibility to adjust their schedules according to demand, which is especially helpful during peak travel periods. Finally, chartering aircraft from other airlines can help to build relationships and expand networks. The higher probability to partner with other airlines allow for both to grow together naturally. Examples of charter airlines include Apollo Jets from the US, Flapper from Brazil, Fly Victor Limited from the UK, Luna Jets from Switzerland, South American Jets from Argentina, AB Jet from Italy, ABS Jets, AS from the Czech Republic, Aperitus Aviation Limited from Hong Kong, others. It is important to highlight that there are some airlines that operate charter flights, although they may have a different business model as the main one. For example, airlines like TUI and Jet2 are low-cost airlines that also operate charter flights. Some charter airlines also offer empty leg flights, which are flights that have been booked but have no passengers. This can be a cheaper option for chartering an airplane. Feeder Airlines Feeder airlines are regional airlines that primarily provide connecting flights for passengers traveling on major airlines. The feeder airline business model typically involves code sharing agreements, in which the feeder airline uses the major airline's flight numbers and branding. In exchange, the feeder airline receives a commission on each passenger it connects to the major airline. This arrangement benefits both the feeder airline by providing a steady stream of passengers and the major airline by expanding its reach to smaller markets. There are many examples of feeder airlines around the world, including Republic Airways in the United States, Porter Airlines in Canada, Cathay Dragon, also known as Dragon Air, Dragon Airlines Limited, a subsidiary of Cathay Pacific Airways in Hong Kong, American Eagle, a subsidiary of American Airlines feeding flights to and from the Caribbean, Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Again, some low-cost carriers may use this model to increase their profitability. A good example is the UK low-cost carrier known as EasyJet, which recently initiated a program called Worldwide by EasyJet, allowing passengers to fly with other airlines like Cathay Pacific, Emirates, Air Transat, Singapore Airlines, and more. Other similar examples include Flybe and JetBlue. Cargo Airlines Cargo airlines are airlines that transport cargo rather than passengers. These airlines typically use large jets with cargo holds that have been specially modified to hold freight. Some cargo airlines also offer passenger services, but their primary focus is on transporting cargo. Cargo airlines typically operate on a point-to-point -point basis, meaning that they fly between two specific airports. This allows them to optimize their routes for cargo rather than passengers. It also means that cargo airlines often have a more complex network of routes than passenger airlines. For example, a cargo airline might fly from Los Angeles to New York and then on to Frankfurt where a passenger airline would fly direct from Los Angeles to New York.
Cargo is typically loaded and unloaded using specialized equipment, such as conveyor belts and cranes. Cargo airlines typically transport a variety of goods, including food, clothes, medical supplies, and manufacturing parts. They may also transport dangerous goods, such as explosives or corrosive chemicals. There are several major cargo airlines in operation today, including FedEx Express, UPS Airlines, Atlas Air Worldwide Holdings, Cargolux. These airlines have been able to achieve success by focusing on time-sensitive shipments, such as overnight express delivery. They have also invested heavily in infrastructure, such as jet cargo planes and sorting facilities. As a result, they have been able to build a competitive advantage over traditional passenger airlines. However, there are also many passenger airlines that have cargo operations to increase profitability. Some examples of passenger airlines that also transport cargo include Delta Airlines, American Airlines, Emirates Sky Cargo, and Qatar Airways Cargo, among others. This chapter was mainly focused on the US and European markets. However, the same classifications apply to other regions of the world, such as Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and Africa. This can be noticed by some of the names we shared in the examples, such as Flapper and South American Jets in the Charter section, Cathay Dragon in the Feeder section, and Emirates Sky Cargo and Qatar Airways Cargo just above.